Hey guys, what's up? It is Saturday, July the 18th, I think. Yep, July the 18th. And I'm going to do a quick update video um, for you guys of everything that I've been working on. Uh, and I frogged one item, but I will be casting on again because I found a top-down pattern for what I wanted to do. So, okay. I also got a knitting machine, the Centro. And I'm going to be using it to make pom-pom scarves and hats and cows to use up a bunch of my acrylic to free up those bins for my hand spun. So this is the first hat I did, which is a test hat. So, and I didn't double it like I see a lot of people doing, but I might do that. I'm probably gonna, I'm, pro I'm, blah. I'm probably gonna do that with future hats that I make. But um, I actually picked up the stitches and de did decreases with double points after I took it off and. Um, the end, like I like this for like a road brim hat, but the end's a little ragged, so I'm gonna probably put a single crochet row or a half double crochet row around the bottom just to neaten out, neaten up that that end where it curls to tighten that up, make it look nicer. But uh, for a road brim hat, it's okay. And it's with, this is with some Caroline Simply Soft. And as you can see, it fits over my dress perfectly. So, and you still got room so that if you want it, you want it to have a traditional like brim, you could um, pick up those stitches and knit some ribbing to fold up, which is also an option You when you have it just the... Um, the single layer for a hat. But this was uh, the first one that I did off of the machine. I didn't have any drop stitches uh, at all. The, the stitches that the, um, when I took it off the machine were easy to pick up. And um, yeah, so I really like it. I got lucky, I guess. I saw some of the um, reviews on this, it's, it's a, on the Centro. Uh, you have people who love it, people who hate it, um, people who, you know, I didn't want to invest in an Addy because I just am not really willing to put that kind of money into a machine right now. If I'm going to spend 200 some dollars, it's going to be on an e-machine or another spinning wheel or on drop spindles or yarn. So, but this is a nice, affordable option for me to knit up a bunch of acrylic four hats and uh, pom-pom scarves or scarves and, and then for, for donation and for gifts and it can help me get rid of my acrylic stash a lot faster um, if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook then you saw the flax sweater I finished for my grandson and he, it's already at his house so you want to see that uh, let me see real quick I want to say you can go to Instagram follow me over on Instagram so you can always see the current projects I'm working on and um, I'll be getting my hair done it's time for me to get a retweet so I'll be getting that done on Thursday and um, yeah because it is definitely time for a retwist. Here, I'm going to show you guys my new grandson. This is Dre. Oops, look that way. There he is. He was 8 pounds, 2 ounces, 21, um, over 21 and a half inches long. So now I have a grandson and a granddaughter. So I got to find boy stuff because, you know, I make little dresses for B all the time. So let me find that for you guys. Yeah. Okay. Found his sweater. I've been on a hat kick. I've been making a lot of hats. So this is the flats. And I I used um sport weight 
and decay weight. The, the green is decay weight. The blue is decay weight. Um, both of those are Plymouth yarns. Um, I think it's a... Let's see. Plymouth is one of my favorite yarns for making making um, baby stuff. And this is the Encore DK. It's 75% acrylic and 25% wool. Um, this You can't go wrong if you have this available for you at your local yarn store. So this is all I have left of that blue. And I use all of the that dark green. So all I have, I have some grays and browns left in my stash. And um, I'll probably make another jumper for him um, from that. Spinning, I finished spinning this uh, Falkland that my husband died. I also finished spinning the the Devon or then then I have some hats I did and the little top I'm gonna show you guys. And this is my granddaughter. She was playing with grandma's eyes and ends yarn. She thinks it's jewelry. She likes to wrap it around her wrists and stuff. And it scares me because I'm afraid she might get it too tight around her neck. So I actually took that from her and hid it. But that is uh, those projects that were completed and have gone over to my grand my grandson's house, which is the house across the street. I call them the people across the street. <laughs> okay. So I have found some cotton that I had, and it was from AC Moore. I don't have a label. B likes to play with the label, so she takes it from me. Okay, I found one. She has a stash of toys over here to my right on the floor. So she put the labels with her in her toy, her little toy basket over there. So it's, it was a pre premier home cotton. Um, the ball has, let me see, we got that there. 140 yards, uh, 2.8 ounce balls, 85% cotton and 15% polyester. The polyester softens this cotton up a lot. Uh, it, it's next to skin soft with the polyester content for this cotton. And um, so I had some in the pink. So I had enough to do one in the pink. I had another pink and this ecru. So I did that. This was like left over from the pig. He's usually on my desk hiding away when he's somewhere. And then the leftover pink with the rest of the ecru. And then now I have some purple cotton that was in the bargain bin at AC Moore that I found. There's three skeins of that and I'm working on the first skein. And like I said, this is I'm just using up all this cotton because I don't use cotton a lot other than to make dishcloths and washcloths and stuff. I I don't particularly enjoy it that much. Um now this premier is nice. I'm pretty sure there's softer cottons in this, the Pima cottons and stuff. But I'm not Typically, I'm not, I just don't feel it. I just, it's not my thing. So, I don't like spinning it either. I absolutely hate spinning it. I try spinning it and I can spin it, but it just, I don't like the way it feels on my hands. I had to keep putting lotion on my hands. It's just a very hard fiber on your skin as far as spinning and working with it. But that's why I want to try and use up, make, make these dishcloths and pot pads. Um, to get rid of these last three balls I have, and then I only have to do it like around October every year, make a bunch of new pot pot pads and stuff for people that I make them for uh, family members that they, I give them to them as um, Christmas gifts and stuff. So this one is a work in progress, so it's not that far from being able to seam it. Uh, probably got to do about, let me see. One, two, about three more rows, and then I can join that up together. Another finished item. This was the rest of the Unicorn uh, Lion Brand Mandala Yarn and Unicorn. Uh, my daughter had used it to make um, puffball bunting um, 
for a, for a Luna's birthday. And that was all that was left, but it was enough to make this little top. And it's just a basic little top. I mean, if you if you can if you can know a yoke pattern or you can memorize a yoke pattern, and then you can just use any stitch you really want for the body of the work. This is just a uh, a two by two shell stitch that I did for the actual pattern. It's a two by two shell. I do this with a three by three shell, which is my favorite shell stitch. Is a three by three, but it's just a little shell stitch. So the next thing I did is, like I said, I've been on a hat kick, and this is one of what I call my my crow knit stein hats, which is cr crochet and knit. So the top of the hat I decreased with knitting. The body of the hat, the main body of the hat, is crochet, and then I did a knit ribbon. I enjoy mixing knitting and crochet together. Um, you get the the easy fast for fast speed of crochet and then you pick up the stitches and then you can get the aesthetics of the knitting plus the brim just snaps back sometimes the brim depending on what the material is made out of when you crochet uh, a ribbing sometimes over time that brim gets so loose that it doesn't have that snapback appeal that knitting does uh, so that was one that it turned out really nice um, so I was really happy with this one and it fits over my dreads, which I don't wear hats, but I thought it was just interesting that it can it's a hat that can fit people of various head sizes or people who have hair. So this was another one that I did, and this one is Pro Knit. The top, I started it with crochet, then I picked up the stitches and I knit, and then I striped it, and then I striped the ribbon, and it gave a real interesting effect, changing the colors and striping the ribbon. Um, another hat that very stretchy, aesthetically pleasing, a little slouchy if you want it to be if you don't have a lot of hair. And it's in purples and grays because I was using scraps. All these hats in, are made and stuff projects right here are made from scrap yarn other than the cotton. Well, the cotton can be scrap yarn too because uh, I used one partial ball for the cotton as well. Then I did this one. It is also scraps. I don't know which um, yarn this was from. I want to think it's the core from another. She probably used most of that to make those puff balls. I don't even know which mandala yarn that was from. Um, and then I did the little puff stitch in different yarn. So that's a different yarn. That's a different yarn. This is a different yarn. And then that purple. So it's it's. Frankenstein hats. I mean, you, you it's a scrap hat. It's not supposed to be like gorgeous, gorgeous, or whatever, but I try to pick colors that I thought look nice together when I put them together. So, yeah. So, this is like, you know, the earth, the grass, the lavender flowers, the various shades of flowers. That's what I was thinking when I was putting these colors together. Alright, so then we had this hat and I had like a little ball of blue a navy blue and then I had some of the purple now this is this uh, is from a um got it from Joanne's one of the balls that they carry uh, I can't think of the name of it but it was from Joanne's I don't have any more, and I don't have any more of their labels. I can't think of the name of that yarn. I know it's from Joanne's because of the way it, the way it feels and the twist of it. And it was a I had I, I had it when I showed you guys a hat I did uh, not too long ago, and I did a couple of hats a couple of weeks ago. It's the remnants of that yarn, and I told you at that time what it was. But yeah, so I finished this hat. Same thing. It's crochet. This whole hat is crochet except for the brim. The brim I picked up and it, it fits my big head too. And then the last one was, I don't remember what yarn this was. I wish I had got more of it because I love the way this blue gradients, gradients with this blue yarn. And then I used a turquoise, dark turquoise. It's like a eagles. I use, I use this colorway for when I'm making stuff for people who are eagle fans. It's the closest I could get 
to that midnight green and so this hat came out really nice i might actually keep this hat in the event that we go up to new york or somewhere and i actually need a hat on my head but um this hat came out really nice it's got a little bit of a slouch to it but if you wanted to you could just fold on your brim and that's like you know the angle for it. but i absolutely love this hat um probably gonna keep it um and then I have the pink, this little pink hot pad from the pig. I can't wear my pig. I don't know. Maybe B got the pig. I don't know. Pig is usually sitting right here on my desk. But she's taller now, so she can reach stuff you didn't think she could reach before. And she's always getting a hold of stuff. So, yeah. And that's, that's what I'm doing. I've been spinning. I've been spinning on my drop spindle at work for Tordy Fleece. Which I think Tour de Fleece is over now. I don't know. This isn't a real Tour de Fleece spin. This would have, would have been had Tour de Fleece spin um, going. But they're, I think they're going to do it, redo it over and back in back yeah, in August. I'm not sure, but there's supposed to be a second Tour de Fleece. And that's the one I think will count. But this yarn that I'm spinning, this fiber, it is a North County or North Country, country Cheviot from Pennsylvania. And it's blended, and I bought it from the um, Walks for Acres booth a couple years ago. And it's blended with some white alpaca, which softens it up a lot. And it makes it a very, very nice fiber to spin. I mean, you can get really thin with this. And it's going to have a nice halo to it. It's a, it's a white cream. It's like two shades. It's like a white and a cream color. I don't know if you guys can pick that up. There we go. So it's got a white and cream in there. One of the two types of fiber. The white, white of the alpaca and then the, that creamy color from the um, North County Chevy. But uh, this is one of the fibers that I have put together and have blended together at Echo View Fiber Mills a couple years ago. And I have tons of fiber. Well, they say life expectancy, stash, stash life, stash expectancy beyond life. So my staff <laughs> I will not outlive my stash. So that's why I got the um, the knitting machine, the circular knitting machine, so that I could try and get through a bunch of my yarn that would be nice and as a hat. Something that's easy to do, fast to do, and I could get through a bunch of that yarn in a year time. My goal is like you guys know i want to try to spend 20 pounds of fiber this year and i want to try to get my acrylic stash pretty much gone except for my nicer acrylics yes there are nicer acrylics i am in particular starting to love mary maxim's acrylic um i ordered a sweater quantity for mary maxim to make a sweater for my husband and I could use wool and stuff, but that would be too hot. He's a hot nature person to start with. So I ordered some Mary Maxim acrylic to see how that would do if it's breathable, more breathable for him. Now that I'm knitting sweaters. And um, if not, I could always make him a, like a cardigan or something. But I'm hoping I got enough because he's 6'2". He's tall. Right shoulder. So, yeah, I'm blushing. My husband makes me blush. I love that man to death. Um, so, yeah. So, that's all. I think that's all. Oh, yeah. I found my granny squares I was looking for. I finally found them. Go figure. So, here they are. So, I'm going to be making another blanket with scraps. So, I'll just show you guys some of the granny squares that I have made. I wish, I think, I can't remember the name of this. It was something about something to do with a garden or some type of flowers. But it was a red heart, I believe. But it, the yarn just ended up being so pretty. I wish I had more of it. It looks really good when you stripe it, too. Um, like, very one yard, solid color and then a variegated color. And there is some more. This is a Knit Picks wool right here. So, and uh, the rest of that blue. So yeah, so I'm just going to keep making squares for my leftovers until I have enough to start making a blanket. I'll probably, the border would probably be either in, um, be in a white 
or light blue or light green, you know. Whatever I have that I think will look good to be the, the border to tie them all together. So, yeah, so that's all I got um, right now. And I have to cast back on that knit tee that I want to do for myself from the top down. Top down is easier to me. Because when I did the flats, I was like, oh my God, this is so easy. So, when I look at the bottom up, and then I look at bottom up construction videos, or all, all that stuff you got to do, with joining these stitches here, joining these stitches there, and then doing the short stitches and short. I'm like, well, I ain't got time for all that. I just want to do a nice looking sweater. I ain't got time to be doing all these fancy little short rows and all this other weird crap. I just want simple and basic. Simple, ba fast, and basic. Fast, simple, and basic. Simple, 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 fast. <laughs> That's what I want. I don't need all those hoop laws and different techniques and stuff because that's not the kind of person I am. I like simple, fast, and basic. And that it looks nice. It is aesthetically pleasing, but it, it is not going to wreck, wreck my brain or kill my brain to try and figure out what I'm doing. Or have to go to somebody and say, hey, can you show me how to do this? Can you show me how to do that? Just because of a particular look of an item. I don't need that in my life. Um, I need stuff that I can enjoy. And I really, really enjoy making that, that flag sweater for the baby. So I'm pretty sure I'll enjoy making the adult version for my husband. Uh, it was simple, fast, and basic. And you got a product that's aesthetically pleasing. And, and, and enjoy you enjoy looking at it and touching it and feeling the little pearl bumps on the side of the sleeves. It was just a very enjoyable project. I, I cannot recommend that as a beginner sweater. I cannot recommend that enough. Uh, top down construction, it was a breeze. Putting the sleeves in, a breeze. So simple, fast, and basic. So, that is all I have for you guys right now. What I'm spinning right now is I'm spinning the rest. Well, besides what I just showed you guys on the drop spindle, I have, uh, is this it? Yeah. This is, um, the Merino, this is a Merino, um, Icelandic cross that I got the fiber from Homestead Wool and Gift Farm. It's cheap. You can find her on the internet. Homestead Wool and Gift Farm. Sanctuary Wool, um, that's another uh, URL of theirs. She's also on Facebook. I, I try to get stuff from her at least once a year. Um, all the proceeds go, they take in sheep, llamas, alpacas, elderly fiber animals that need a forever home. They're too old for whatever reason or perhaps the farmer... Who, who had the animals are no longer able to take care of them due to becoming elderly or something has happened where these animals need so that they're not put down or turn into glue or whatever they do with them they need somewhere to be somewhere to, where they can live out their lives in peace and the only the way they earn their keep is their their shorn their fiber is uh, sent off to the mill and the sale of their fiber and fleece is used to help get food, hay, medical, whatever these animals need. So I try at least once a year to order something from her meal. I mean, from her farm. Um, and I've never been disappointed, especially with her Romney. Um, as you know, like with dogs, some sheep change colors as they age. And some of the older Romney tend to go silvery gray. And it is such a beautiful 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 color just absolutely gorgeous color which is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm glad a farm like that exists so that you can get a chance to see these changes in the fiber of these older sheep um, and some of the sheep's fiber actually because they're not they're, they're older they're not getting the, the vitamins and nutrients the texture of their fiber can change it can be like an old person who's starting to thin and get finer or it could become coarser it, you you never know it's different just like it's different for each of us as we age it's different for the, the sheep and the other fiber animals so i recommend you guys to, to at least look into sanctuary wool 
also known as the um, Homestead Wool and Gift Farm, Wool and Gift Shop. But uh, I'll put a link to um, the shop in at the end of this video so you guys can see that. And that's pretty much all I have. Um, I'm working part time from work, part time from home. Um, and COVID has cranked back up, and the people who have pre-existing medical conditions are really, really, really um, have to be careful uh, this this time around even more because the people that I'm hearing about is passing away within the community and within the family. The people who have passed away have all had pre pre-existing health conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, heart issues. A lot of these people are very, very vulnerable to the the these diseases. They um they're it's just horrible. Um, and then the fact that um, a lot of these hardest hit places are running out of beds in the ICUs. They they run out of the ventilators. They don't have ven enough ventilators. Um, they don't. It's 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 sad. Everything is going on, and and it's going to get worse because this crazy man is opening up the schools. And most of these people who are getting sick, guess how they got sick? When they open up, they partially open up the beaches and stuff. And these young people went out there running around like fools, having fun, and getting COVID not showing any symptoms and bring it home to their family members who are compromised medically and now these people are in, in the hospital you got 30 year olds 40 year olds dying from COVID now and and it was brought home by their teenagers or their young tweens 20 20 year olds and stuff who were bored i gotta go to the mall i gotta go to the beach stay your mother home sit home Read a book. Work on your mind. Study the political science of what is going on in this world today. Do something besides run around and, and do what they want you to do, which is to spend every dime you have in your pocket on foolishness instead of putting the money away so that if something does happen, economically you won't be completely devastated. It's hard enough as it is when you work out two people working two jobs trying to make ends meet, but you got millions of Americans who have been laid off or out and outright their jobs no longer exist because their the small businesses that they worked at went under because of this, because all the so called money that was supposed to be put aside for a small business, guess who got it? Big business got that money. Explain to me how a multi-billion dollar company was able to get these loans ahead of your local beautician, your local farmer's produce market, your, your local barber, your local construction company, who, who, the guy that comes around and fixes your shutters, fixes your shingles. His business, all these little small businesses have gone out of business because they couldn't get any of that money because hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars went to the subsidiaries of big businesses such as some of these banks, real estate companies. All these companies are owned by large conglomerates. A lot of their little side hustles, so to speak, to keep it all the money in the house, got to that money before people who actually are supposed to be slotted for could get the money. And, and, and it doesn't make sense that your local beautician can no longer keep her business open, but a multi-million dollar company that owns her rental space was able to get a loan that she couldn't. Y'all think about that. That's where our tax dollars went. And a lot of these companies are not even owned by Americans anymore. A lot of these companies are owned by other big conglomerates in other countries such as China, such as Japan, such as Russia, a lot of them own the companies that got those loans. So y'all think about that. Think about where our tax dollars are going. They're not going to help us. They're helping everybody else, but they're not helping us. So that's all I got to say about that. So y'all take care and wear your mask 
If you're going into a 7-Eleven, there's a sign on the door that says, Mask required. Protect yourself so you'll have a 7-Eleven to go to that won't shut down because all their employees got sick because one person decided they're too good to wear a mask into that business and they're COVID positive and don't know it and they're walking around spreading their germs for everybody else to touch or breathe because they're an asshole. I'm just going to say it. You're an asshole. Two people wearing a mask is good. One person wearing a mask is not as good. None of you wearing a mask, that's a recipe for disaster, and that's what we're seeing going on in this country right now. A recipe for disaster. The only good thing about it and I can think of that they're thinking of is the fact that the more of us that die, the less of us that can file for Social Security. And if you can knock out the father and the mother, and the children are all adults, then nobody gets to touch Social Security that they work their asses off to earn for their retirement. Nobody gets it. Guess who gets it? Uncle Sam gets to keep it. You get you, your family. The family gets none of that money back. Uncle Sam gets that money. So you might want to also start thinking about other ways to save and invest your money, so that if something like this happens again, and you lose your mother and your father, your grandmother and your grandfather, because that's happening in some households. They're not just losing one grandparent. They're losing both their grandparents within days or weeks of each other, hours of each other. So that's something to think about. That is income that these people work their asses for, and they will never touch a dollar of it because they both passed away, and all of their children are adults. The government gets to keep that money. So think about that. And not mention property. A lot of people aren't expecting to die. They don't have a will set up. So then you're going to have families fighting over stuff because there's no will. Or if they, or if their children are adults and, and they have no interest in paying the taxes and stuff, and, or if that person was in a nursing home or something, then you're going to have states getting involved because they want their money for when that person was in that nursing home. They're going to, you're going to have all kinds of people getting this. It's, it's going to be a hot, holy mess going on around here. And the more people that die, the worse it's going to get for everybody. Because truthfully, it's, I just, I just wash my hands of it. That's it. I'm done. I will, I now need to find some decompression stuff to do so I can get back into my happy space. <laughs> so y'all take care. You get, you, you got your rant video today, Terry. <laughs> so y'all take care.